Hello friends, this video on classification of elements part 27 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 26. What do you understand by isoelectronic species? Name species that will be isoelectronic with these ions. So isoelectronic, as I've told, species is something which has same electron. As the name says, isoelectronic that is same electrons they have same electrons fluorine if you see has 10 electrons fluorine minus because fluorine has 9 fluorine minus will have 9 plus 1 10 so you can have so many like uh, uh, ions which has 10 electrons for example if you take, if you take sodium plus it has 10 electrons if you take neon without charge has 10 electrons oxygen minus 2 has 10 electrons aluminium plus 3 has 10 electrons and so on we we'll talk about argon. Argon has 18 electrons. So I can have sulfur minus 2 will have 18 electrons, chlorine minus 1 will have 18 electrons, potassium plus 1 will have 18 electrons, calcium plus 2 will have 18 electrons. If we talk about Mg plus 2, so this guy has Mg has 12, so plus 2 that is 2 electrons gone. This guy has 10 electrons. So for 10, we know we have all this hell lot of electrons I can write just sodium plus because sodium has 11 sodium plus will have 10 neon has 10 oxygen has minus 2 oxygen has 8 oxygen minus 2 will have 10 aluminium has 13 aluminium plus 3 will have 10 because 3 electrons are gone next is Rb plus so Rb has 37 you say plus charge that is 1 electron is gone that is 36 electron so you can have Br minus Kr SR plus 2 these all guys have 36 electrons. Correct? Right? And that's what isoelectronic species means. So we have this following species N3 minus O2 minus F minus Na plus minus Mg plus 2 minus Al3 plus. The question is what is common? And the second question is arrange this in the order of ionic radius. So if you see N minus 3, so uh, nitrogen has 7 electrons. You add 3 electrons, it becomes 7 plus 3, 10. Oxygen has 8, you add plus 2 in there, it becomes 10. Chlorine has 9, you add 1 electron, it becomes 10. Sodium has 11, you subtract 1 electron, it becomes 10. Magnesium has 12, you subtract 2, it becomes 10. Aluminium has 13, you subtract 3 electrons, it becomes 10. All are 10 electrons actually. 8, it becomes 10, right? Oxygen has 8, so you add 2 electrons, it becomes 8. So they are all isoelectronic species. Correct? So we have to now in the decrease in, uh, arrange in the order of size. So as I told that max proton means minimum size if they are in the same period. Okay. So we'll see the number of protons now. So nitrogen has how many protons? So let's see which has maximum proton. Or let's let's write the value here only. So nitro, this guy has uh, seven. This guy is eight. This guy is nine proton. This guy is eleven. Manganese has uh, right here uh, twelve. Aluminium is thirteen. So first we'll write aluminium plus three, maximum proton, right? And then we'll write uh, manganese plus two. Because this guy is 13, this guy is 12, and then I have 10, 10 is Na plus, and then I have F minus, this is 9, and I have O2 minus, this is 8, and then I have N3 minus, that is, so this is the order of protons, right? So this guy is max proton, this guy is min proton, right? So this guy is max proton, so this guy is minimum size. And this guy is maximum size, right? Because more the proton it can attract the electrons more in the atom will shrink. So the question says why cations are smaller and anions are larger. So cations are positive charge and anions are negative charge. So when anions are negative charge, that means it has more electrons, same protons. So 
since the now the same proton has to attract more electrons the power of the protons or the the net power electrons will be getting is less so they'll expand in case of cations they have less electrons but same protons so the protons are same but the electron became less so the existing number of electrons protons can attract more so the shrink it shrinks size is less right so this guy it expands and size is more correct what is the significance of the term isolated gas atom and the ground state while defining ionization enthalpy and electron enthalpy so when i say uh, ionization enthalpy i say energy required to remove one electron from all right i e ionization enthalpy is nothing but energy to remove one electron from isolated gas atom to ground state so when i say uh, isolated gas atom that means i am looking only for this energy so if this let's suppose atom is a solid or crystal so in that case i need some extra energy to remove the whole atom from the crystal and then remove the electron from that correct right? because if it is crystal like that i need some extra energy because this electron may be tied up with uh, uh, some force from this atom also let's suppose there are there are so many atoms here now so i want to take out one electron this electron will get this repulsive uh, attractive form from this nuclei it will also get attractive form from this nuclei right from here also from this guy also you never know but i am looking only for uh, enthalpy for one atom so it's better that to remove other electron make it only one atom and this is possible if it is isolated and if it is in gaseous atom correct so that's why we use this term because if it is not gaseous there is there may be some attractive force among the atoms right so so these things are avoided and we use this term isolated gas atom and why the ground state because ground state is the most stable state for atom okay so when we talk about electron gain enthalpy or ionization energy we talk about the ground state because it is most stable state for energy of electron in the ground state of hydrogen is this many joules calculate ionization enthalpy of hydrogen so in the ground state if this is the energy that means this much energy is required to remove one electron correct because we are talking about removing an electron from a gaseous atom in the ground state so in the ground state the energy is this much that means this much energy is required so i can say that the ionization enthalpy of hydrogen is minus 2.8 into 10 to the power minus 80 joules but the question asks in terms of joule per mole so we'll multiply this guy into mole and mole is nothing but 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 joule per mole right and you solve this you get 1.31 into 10 to the power 6 joule that's correct right. see the ground state has this much energy that means you are you need to put this much energy to take out this electron this is my ionization enthalpy for one atom but i'm looking for per mole multiply with the mole number so if you see all this the question say in the second period elements all our second period elements the actual ionization enthalpies are in this order lithium barium boron carbon in this fashion but if you see the order of the element this something like this lithium barium boron argon nitrogen oxygen boron neon this is the order the question says why barium has higher enthalpy than boron so let's write the electronic configuration boron is 5 so it will be 
वन एस टू टू एस टू टू पी वन बेरलियम फोर वन एस टू टू एस टू सो यू सी द आउटर मोस्ट इलेक्ट्रॉन ऑर्बिटल इन दिस बेरलियम इज फिल्ड दिस इज गाइज स्टेबल दिस इज गाइज स्टेबल सो इट वोट अलाउ टू रिमूव इलेक्ट्रॉन सो इजली राइट सो इट विल हैव हायर आयनाइशन इंथाल करेक्ट सिंस बेरलियम इज स्टेबल इट वोट अलाउ इलेक्ट्रॉन टू बी रिमूव इजली सो इट हैज हायर इंथाल आयनाइशन इंथाल Now we have oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine. So let's write for oxygen. Oxygen is six atomic number, one s two, two s two, two p four. Then we have nitrogen, is seven, one s two, two s two, two p three. And then I have fluorine, right? Fluorine is uh, what? Fluorine is nine. So one s two, two s two, two p three, two p five. The question is oxygen is lower than nitrogen. See if you see the nitrogen one, it is stable. Why? Because it is half filled. Since it is half filled, stable, so nitrogen will have more than oxygen. I am comparing nitrogen and oxygen now. Correct. So nitrogen will have more. Electron enthalpy than oxygen. Now let's compare oxygen and fluorine. Also, if you see with oxygen, one one best part is if it lose one electron here, it will become stable, right? Will become stable if lose electron, one electron. How? It will become two p three. That is half filled. But for fluorine, it is nothing like that. There is no uh, extra benefit fluorine is getting by losing electron. But oxygen is getting extra benefit by losing electron. So oxygen will have tendency to lose electron. So oxygen will have lower ionization in there. The shoot. See, just by electronic configuration, you can find you can compare actually which will have lower enthalpy and which will have higher enthalpy. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos. Try free online tests. Get the best quality study materials. Study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.